Hello and welcome back to Deep Sky Shed. Today we're going to be talking about stretching images, histograms, uh, linear images, and trying to just get a handle on what that is all about. Um, and also I'm going to be showing you how to stretch images both in PixInsight and Cyril. Um, so the first thing we need to talk about really is what is a linear image. And I suppose a simple way of putting that is that when you have um, when you have your telescope pointed at a target, you're capturing photons that are coming from that target. And these photons are passing through the telescope optics and they're arriving at the sensor at the back of the telescope. And they're hitting, the photons are hitting different pixels on the sensor. And some of these photons, not all of them, but some of them will get uh, converted into electrons. And the electrons kind of fill up each of the pixels and, and, and they, they store up in the pixels. And when you save the image, uh, what happens then is that every pixel is red and the number of electrons that are stored within that pixel are then written to a file. And the file will be a linear file. So it's either the FITS file or a TIFF. So let's just go and have a look uh, at my desktop and we'll see how that all works. OK, so here we are back at the desktop. Uh, and for this demonstration, I'm going to use this file here, which was provided by April Johnson. It's a, a linear FITS file uh, of M45. And as you can see at the moment in its linear state, it's pretty much uh, just a black background with a, a few bright stars that are managing to show through. Uh, and I'm going to show you now what it looks like once it's been stretched. Uh, and as you can see, we've brought out uh, a lot of the detail. We've got nebulosity. Also, we're sort of highlighting um, some issues with the image with uh, gradients or maybe might be a bit of vignetting. Um, anyway, I'm going to sort of just explain to you a little bit about the histogram and what a histogram is before we go any further, as I think that's probably a very important basis for really understanding the whole, the whole process. Uh, for that, I'm going to use the um, PixInsight's histogram transformation tool. Uh, I've got it loaded up on the stretch file. And this is a histogram. Uh, it's a kind of a, a pictorial graph that represents all the data that you can see uh, within this image. Uh, just to give you a, a comparison, I will show you what a linear version of the same image looks like. So that is the histogram that represents that. And you can see they're quite different. Now, what the process of stretching is really all about is it's to take uh, these narrow, very narrow tall peaks and to make them wider. Um, so if I just go to the other one a minute, to the stretched one, you'll see, to make them look like that. Uh, and you can see really where the word stretch comes from. Really, we've just stretched, uh, stretched the uh, peaks out widthwise. And in the process of doing that, what we've actually done is moved a lot of the data into the brighter part of the histogram. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Let me just show you. Um, so if I just click on any part of this image, uh, you'll, you'll see some lines will appear somewhere within this histogram. So I'm just going to click on a black spot. And you can see there's a little line there appearing on the left. Uh, and as I move into the lighter areas, you can see the lines are moving further to the right. And in fact, we've got three lines. We've got uh, red, green, and blue lines representing the three color channels that make up the image. So as you can see, we, as I move around, the lines are appearing in different places. And the reason for this is because uh, the horizontal axis of this graph from left to right represents going from dark to light. Uh, so it's, it's really plotted with dark being on the left and light being on the right and all the kind of shades between all the levels between dark and light being plotted between those two extremes. When we get onto a star, which is obviously very bright, if I click on that, you'll see it's right on the right hand end. And actually, if you look carefully, you can see there's a tiny little peak right on the right hand end. And that is all the star data is all just scrunched up in, into that position. So the other axis we have here, which is the 
vertical axis, what does that represent? Well, that, that represents actually the number of pixels for each of these given levels that exist within the image. So the highest level here is going to probably be something like uh, this sort of muddy, slightly hazy background. Yes, and as you can see, they're moving quite close to that. Let's just move around. In fact, that. So the level under my cursor now, around about there, is the highest peak. So most of the pixels in this image are at that kind of level of light. Anyway, as you can see, that this graph, as I say, represents all the levels within this image and also shows you how many pixels there are for each of those given levels. Now, how do I get from there to there? So that's what I'm going to show you now. I, I will incidentally be showing you the equivalent in Cyril once I've done this. It's all very similar actually, but I will switch to Cyril uh, after I've done this and show you. Okay, before we go any further, let's just talk about the controls on the histogram transformation window. There are basically three controls. Uh, they're little sliders. Uh, there's one in the middle of the histogram, this one here. And this controls all the mid-levels of the histogram. We've got one on the left, in the dark end of the histogram, often called the black point. So that's what controls that. And we've got one on the right-hand end, which controls all the brightest highlights. Uh, normally that's going to affect stars, so personally I would just leave that part there and never touch it. Uh, if you do move it, you're likely just to cause bloating of stars and also the core of bright nebulae like uh, M42, for example. So I'm just going to open the preview window. OK, so we now got a preview of what we're doing. And what I'm then going to do is to just start nibbling away at this. Um, never try and, you know, try and always do this in small steps. You'll get a much better result. You want a kind of progressive effect as you're doing this and make small adjustments. So you can really see what you're doing at every step along the way. OK, so I'm going to move in the left-hand slider a bit. And as you can see, that's causing, um, that's causing things to the, the background, the sky to go darker. I'm then going to move this middle slider in just a little to the left of the center line. And that's starting to brighten it up a bit. So we're getting a little bit more contrast now. OK, I'm going to apply that. And actually, I'm going to just apply that again, I think. Uh, and now I might reset it and just see where I am and decide what to do next. So again, I think I'll bring that in a bit further or, or otherwise we'll be here all day. Uh, and same again, I'm going to bring that in. So all the time, if you see, I'm kind of squeezing in at the data and it's starting to pull it apart. It's starting to make it occupy more width and it's moving the right hand side of the data towards the light. And it's also actually moving the dark side, which is why we keep having to kind of pull it back. So I'm going to just leave that there. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to go quite that much. Right, and we keep going. Look, and now it's starting to really stretch out. And I need to get it back under control, so I'll pull that back to there. That's pulled it back to there. I do a reset, because I, I don't want this slide to come this side of the data. Otherwise, that's just going to start wiping it all out. Always try not to bring the sliders actually ever into the data, because then you're just clipping data. Uh, and you're going to send a lot of, for example, there, I've put a lot of the data has now gone into, has been turned to pure black, and it, it doesn't want to be. That's what's called um, clipping the black point. So I'm going to leave that to the left at the moment, that slider, and I'm going to keep working on the middle one. and Keep trying to pull this stuff out. Uh, again, just do a bit more. Again, do a bit more. Again, right, that's enough of that. OK, so I'll do a reset at this point. Uh, now I'm going to actually try and correct this 
this imbalance. So I think I'm going to leave the blue where it is and try and move the green and red to be a bit more in line with the blue. So I'm going to just select, instead of uh, selecting all channels, which is what I've got at the moment, I'm going to go for just the green. And now you can watch, um, if I just pull in this left hand slider, you can see I'm pulling the green towards the blue. So we just put it so it's over the blue like that. We set that in. Just remember to reset it. That's good. And then I'm going to uh, pull the midpoint to get the red in line with them. So here comes the red. Same thing. Do a reset. So now I've got my three color channels pretty well balanced. And we'll just carry on, do a bit more. So I'm going to take another little nibble there at that. Move the mid in. That's good. Just reset because, again, I, what I don't want is to bring that into there. That means that everything here, everything to the left hand side of that line, is now turned to black, and I don't want that. So let's, sorry, just start again, just reset that. We'll just take a little bit that much. Keep going. Do it again. Reset. And as you can see, we're starting to develop some nebulosity. I just bring the black slider back in. You get the picture. And basically, uh, that's it. That's how to manually stretch the histogram. Now, of course, uh, in PixInsight, there is uh, probably an easier way of doing this, which most of the time would be fine. That being said, this, is, this gives you a lot of control once you get the hang of it. And you can certainly, things like balancing up the color channels, you can certainly mess about with that manually and, and get them just right to start with, which is a good thing. But I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll just close this a minute and I'll just close this. And I'm just going to back up again, go right back to the beginning. There we go, all those steps. Okay, so we're back to the original uh, linear unstretched image. And I'm going to use the screen transfer function, which is really just used to do a kind of screen preview of, of what it's going to look like. It's just so you can have a look at a linear image and see what's actually in there. So we just click this little nuclear button uh, and that's sort of stretched it. OK, well, as we saw in the histogram, you know, we've got way too much green. So what we can do is we can just deselect this little um, link RGB channels and this tool will now um, basically try and line up all those peaks that we were looking at uh, a few minutes ago. That It'll try and do that automatically. So we'll just hit this button again and there you go. So that was a rather quick way of doing what we just spent about 10 minutes doing. But as I say, there may be a good reason for doing that sometimes. Now, if I want to convert this into a permanent stretch, I go back to the histogram transfer tool. Uh, and all I would do is to make sure I've got this one sort of highlighted, uh, the one that I want to stretch. Uh, then I take the screen transfer and I just drag this little arrow in the bottom left hand corner and I pop it and drop it over the footer of the histogram transformation window. And as you can see, I've now actually captured that histogram. Um, and I can now transfer that into the image. And there you go, and I've permanently stretched that now. I just uh, reset this so that I'm not double stretching it. And reset this as well. And there you go, so that's another way of doing it. And then I could, if I wanted to, um, again, go into this tool and start tweaking it a bit further. Anyway, that's how you stretch the histogram 
uh, manually in Pix Insight. So now let's go on to Cyril and have a look at its equivalent tool. OK, so here we are uh, with Cyril. And we're going to open up Cyril's histogram transformation tool, very similar to Pix Insight. Exactly the same process. We just start squeezing these sliders in. Keep going. Keep going. All the time we're just stretching out that data bit by bit. Just going to make that a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. Now with Cyril, um, we can also adjust each channel individually. So I'm just going to disable the red, disable the blue. Now I'm only going to be affecting the green. And I'm going to just try and move the green so it's pretty much in line with the blue. I think that's about it. Apply that. Now I'm going to do the same with the red. Just move the middle slider to move it to the right. That's roughly it. Apply that. And now we go back to all three channels. So we're moving it all together again. And we start stretching. Start bringing out that nebulosity and here it comes. Main thing is just don't clip into this data left or right. So really the left hand slider now is about it's about as far right as it can go. If anything now that any if you move that very much at all, you're gonna start actually uh, destroying a bit of data. And the further along this slope up we get this curve up, the more you're gonna be clipping. So we don't want to be doing that. We could maybe go just a touch more. Same here, we don't want to go much past there, I would say. Um, so again, that gives you an idea, very similar, uh, very similar result. I could just give it one more. You can also use these controls. Obviously, I'm, I'm pushing everything in one way because I'm just trying to really stretch data. But uh, generally, that's what you would be doing and normally it, it'll be just little tweaks with this center control here. I mean, you can, you can go the other way with it to darken things if you want. You know, you might find that um, that's what you need to do in some cases. But generally, you go to the left. If you want to bring out more details, you go to the left. Of course, if you've got noise and other problems like this, this one, we've got quite a strong gradient. The more we push it, the more that becomes obvious. Um, and we might have to find other ways of dealing with that. Anyway, um, I hope that's really given you some insight into what we really mean by uh, stretching images and, and what the histogram is uh, and what linear images are. And the next video is going to be about another way of stretching images, which is going to be using the generalized hyperbolic stretch tools Again, uh, we've got equivalent tools in PixInsight and Cyril, so I'll be giving you a quick demonstration of both of those. That does the same kind of thing as we've just been doing, but with a great deal more control. And then after that, in another video, I'll be showing how to use curves. Personally, curves are my go-to tool. I, I prefer them. If I could only have one of these tools, 
I would personally pick curves. Anyway, we'll come on to that another day. In the meantime, I hope you found this useful, uh, and I hope to see you again soon uh, on the next video. So, bye for now.